In a courtroom in Florida, a spectacle. Three hours of can't-look-away testimony from the man accused of murdering an apparently unarmed teenager over loud rap music in a car. Michael Dunn repeatedly tried to convince the jury that he acted in self-defense, while prosecutors repeatedly ripped into him as a cold-blooded killer. This is a case that touches the two classic American hot buttons of race and guns, and ABC's Ryan Owens has this report for our series, Crime and Punishment. I'm looking out the window, and I said, you're not going to kill me, you son of a bitch, and I shot. In his own words and in riveting detail. It, it wasn't just my life I was worried about, no. Admitted killer Michael Dunn recreates for the jury the moments that led to the shooting death of 17-year-old Jordan Davis. Do you notice any differences about your body physically? I'm shaking. I mean, I'm quivering like a leaf. Prosecutors call it cold-blooded murder. Dunn maintains it was self-defense. It started when Dunn and his fiancée, Rhonda Rauer, pulled into a Jacksonville, Florida gas station in November 2012. They parked next to an SUV full of teens. Body panels of the SUV were rattling. My rearview mirror was shaking. My eardrums were vibrating. Okay. I mean, this was ridiculously loud music. Dunn's fiance testified the 47-year-old software developer had this reaction. And what did the defendant say? <sighs> oh, I hate that thug music. Rauer went inside the store to buy a bottle of wine. Seconds later, gunshots. Oh my God, somebody's shooting. Somebody's shooting out their car. Dunn pulled his semi-automatic pistol out of the glove box and fired 10 times. Today, he testified while she was in the store, he talked to the young men in that SUV. I said, can you turn that down, please? They turned it off. And if the music wasn't off, at least the bass stopped completely. Okay. And at that point, what did you then say? I said, thank you. Okay. Dunn says the pleasantries didn't last long. And with Jordan Davis's parents looking on, he told the jury the 17-year-old in the rear passenger seat started mouthing off. I should kill that here. I should kill that Now he's screaming. Okay. There's no, there's no mistake of what he said. That is what he said. Today, Dunn tried to convince the jury Jordan Davis was a foul-mouthed, shotgun-toting teen who actually pointed a gun at him. You said it looked like a barrel of a gun or a shotgun? It was a thick enough uh, profile. It was, to my eye, a 12-gauge, maybe 20. When he says, yeah, I'm going to kill you, I look, and I'm looking at a barrel. He's, he's showing me a gun, and he's threatening me. But after he opened the door, then he looked at me and said, you're dead, At that point, what did you believe was about to happen to you? I, I thought I was going to be killed. That was only one of the buzzwords Dunn used to try to convince this jury the shooting was self-defense. He seemed to hit them all. I was still fighting for my life. I knew I had done nothing wrong. I have every right of self-defense, and I took it. But Prosecutor John Guy would have none of it. Jordan Davis was never a threat to you, was he, Mr. Dunn? Absolutely, he was. As soon as his cross-examination began, we were reminded why defense attorneys cringe when their clients take the stand. I don't want to call it an act of desperation, but they really had no choice. Without his testimony, there was no evidence of self-defense. All you had was a man shooting nine times into a car with a bunch of teenagers. He would easily be convicted. So he had to get on the stand. He had to explain why he fled the scene and why he didn't call 911. You were being disrespected by a mouthy teenager, weren't you? No, I was being threatened. Threatening to kill somebody isn't a disrespect. That is just crazy. Prosecutor Guy reminded the jury no gun was found in the teen's SUV and grilled Dunn on every inconsistency, including the fact his own fiance said he never mentioned a gun the night this happened. You did not tell her during that three miles anyone pointed any weapon at you, did you? I think I did. I think I was very clear that they threatened my life. My question was, did you tell her they had a weapon of any kind? Yes, I did. Mr. Dunn, the truth is, you never told the love of your life that those boys had a gun. You weren't there. All right, ma'am, if you'll come right around here. And Later, prosecutors seat. called the fiance back to the stand to hammer home the point.
When you came out of the out of the gate gas station and you got into the defendant's car? Yes. Did the defendant ever tell you he saw a gun in that red SUV? No. Back in the hotel room, Ms. Rauer, that same night, did the defendant ever tell you that he saw the boys with a firearm? No. Did he ever tell you that he saw the boys with a weapon? No. Dunn claims his fiance got something else wrong, too. The last word she said she heard him say before the shooting. Oh, I hate that thug music. You don't recall saying I hate that thug music? No, I, if I would have said anything, I would have called it rap crap. Thug music isn't a term I would use. The prosecution spent a lot of time quizzing Dunn about his behavior after the shooting. Mr. Dunn, the reason you left the gas station is because you knew you had shot into a car of four unarmed teenagers. That's incorrect. Dunn acknowledges he and Rauer fled the scene of the shooting and never called police. Instead, they returned to this hotel and ordered pizza and made some cocktails. I didn't call the police until the following morning. You called the pizza man? Dunn said he didn't realize anyone had been killed until late that night when he used his cell phone to search for information about the shooting. I ran to the bathroom. I just, tell the jury why you ran to the bathroom. I, I vomited. Okay. But he Not still one. didn't call police and instead drove home to Central Florida where he was ultimately arrested. It wasn't going to change it from self-defense to anything else. Dunn was on the stand for more than three hours, and he was the defense's final witness. Go ahead, Mr. Dunn. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, the defense has now arrested their By late tomorrow, the jury should to begin to deliberating his fate. Prosecutors want first-degree murder, but many observers think that's a stretch. They've lost credibility by doing that. This is not a case of premeditated murder. He didn't know these kids ahead of time. He didn't go to the gas station in order to shoot them. Yes, they love to Thank overcharge because it frightens defendants. It hurts them in trying to get out on bail. It sends the message to the public that this is really a vicious crime. But when they get to the trial, can they really prove it? That will be up to 12 jurors who will have Michael Dunn's own words still fresh in their minds. I, I thought I was going to be killed. I'm Ryan Owens for Nightline in Jacksonville, Florida.